Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 105 of the RRBG podcast. Please check out our Patreon page. If you go to patreon.com slash rock and roll beer guy, you can sign up today and gain access to exclusive content like our interviews from Psycho Las Vegas with bands like Enslaved and Red Fang and much more. Aside from the exclusive content, you can earn yourself some rewards like getting a shout out on social media, getting a shout out during an episode or even getting your very own episode. Support the podcast so we can keep doing this for free. If you go to patreon.com slash rock and roll beer guy, sign up today. Another way to support the podcast is by picking up a t-shirt. If you could, please visit rockandrollbeerguy.threadless.com and pick up an exclusive RRBG podcast t-shirt today. In this episode, I talked to John Dyer Baisley of the band Baroness. We talk about the creation of their latest record, Golden Gray. We talk a little bit about their lineup changes, the potential of acoustic records down the road, and much, much more. It was an honor to have him on the show. Please don't forget to pick up the record Golden Gray, which is available now, and follow them on social media so you can catch them on tour. Please don't forget to share this with all of your friends. Cheers. Hey, what's up, Eddie? Hey, what's up, John? How you doing? I am chilling. Chilling. Been busy with the yeah. uh, touring schedule right now. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's 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 all it's all been pretty uh, dizzying for the past couple of weeks, and we haven't really gotten started on the touring thing too heavily yet. We I mean we did a little we did a little run in South America, uh, but we're getting ready for a big U.S. thing now. So yeah, it's it's getting it's getting crazy. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, you guys just released your record Golden Gray uh like June fourteenth. It wasn't that long ago. So I know that this is like, you know, this is the busy time. You guys had a couple years before the since the last record. Um and you know, those two years were spent touring nonstop. I remember you guys were playing right up until the release of the new record. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean like I, I I do I I have always considered the band a touring you know we, we do consider ourselves like a live band and mm. um as such that mean i mean what's what's happened i guess what's happened over the course of the past 15 years or, or whatever is that we really you know it, it re we really have a hard time like taking a break from touring in order to to make an album so we, we sort of tried with golden gray to separate our identity as you know as a live touring band and as a, as a writing and recording band but it didn't it didn't happen smoothly i mean what ended up happening was we were we you know we recorded the album in, in you know typically when we work with uh, our producer dave friedman we work in three short segments uh you know that are spaced out by you know weeks by, by several weeks typically and in between i think the second and third uh, sessions we actually we actually were on tour so it, it was it just, it just sort of gets it gets it gets kind of weird because they're they're very different things to, you know they 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 have a very different workflow they require a very very different amount of physical uh, and creative energy so it, it's it's sort of like sort of odd to be doing both in the in a condensed period of time because it it just you get kind of like it gets very chaotic yeah but I can imagine <laughs> that sort of worked that sort of worked with our record I mean, the record was born out of like total chaos and it took a very you know it was it was kind of like a uh a very labyrinthine uh process to make it <laughs> so uh yeah of course of course we were doing a little bit of everything in between but yeah i mean it, the other thing is as you mentioned it was a couple of years in between albums and that's i guess that's one of the things that's that's that can be difficult if you're touring all the time is you know being in the being in the touring mindset and then going oh sh you know shit we gotta get a record out and that's uh you know that's gonna take some time to put together so uh where where I would have liked to have had you know maybe two years in between uh, purple and golden gray I think we ended up 
up having closer to three and a half or four. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, it sounds crazy to me to have to like, you know, stop everything like, Hey, we need to actually focus on writing a new album. Uh, and you know, right. anybody that's been listening to the band, uh, you know, all these years knows that your albums, they, they're very prolific they're, They go, you know, they have a, a sound, but they kind of go all over the place. It's, same goes for this album. I mean, there's blast beats in there. Uh, there's a lot yep. more, <laughs> there's a lot more acoustic sounds, uh, a lot more melodic harmonies now that Gina, you know, is accompanying with vocals and everything. Um, mm -hmm. how has that been different for you in, with the writing process, having Gina there to kind of play off of? Uh, I mean, I, I, I would love to say that it's, it's like a hugely different experience, but the fact that, you know, there's a couple, I mean, it, and it, and it is in some ways, but the more, I think the most important thing to recognize, even though it doesn't, may not sound like it is that on that, on the most basic, most fundamental, deepest sort of level of songwriting, I don't feel as though anything, uh, in the process has changed over, you know, you know since we began with the exception of the fact that we, we, you know, lineups have changed. So there's, a, there's a personnel issue at, you know, at stake and we've become better musicians. You know, that's just sort of what happens when you do things all the time. Um, so it's like the fluidity and ease that we have, uh, you know, as songwriters or, or as musicians who have, who are, you know, tr attempting to become more and more diverse in, in our skill sets. Yeah. Like that, that's obviously, uh, improved or, or at least, uh, grown over the years. Um, but, you know, I think that, you know, whatever the impulse is that gets a song from concept through execution, you know, in, in other words, from like nothing to something, um, yeah. is it's kind of, it's kind of a mystery. You know, it, it does not matter that, you know, we've, you know, as a band, we've released five or six records, depending on how you look at them and, you know, a handful of EPs and, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that we've written, you know, like a hundred song, hundred plus songs or whatever, uh, because it's still equally, you know, like, like no matter, no matter how much better we become as, uh, you know, comp compositionally or, or, or how much more fluid we become as, as, you know, as musicians or how many more technical capabilities we gain, it doesn't make songwriting easier. Yeah. Um, you know, like song, I don't know. I don't know where they come from, you know? Uh, if anything, it makes it more I will, difficult. I think <laughs> I dude, I, t I totally think so. I mean, I, I play, I, ha I happen to play in a band now with three musicians who have a, an extremely thorough depth of knowledge, uh, regarding music theory. And that has helped that has helped in, in, you know, incalculable ways, uh, in terms of the way that we communicate with one another, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to go through these long winded discussions about what's happening. Cause everybody can, can sort of identify that, and, you, know, you know, more or less like the other three guys better, better than I can, but that doesn't, again, it doesn't really make, it doesn't make the, the idea of writing a good song better. It, it, it's just like, you know, I have, I have a more florid language now and, and I can articulate myself better, but, uh, that, doesn't mean that you know the song gets better so you know as the, you know as as the skill set improves as as every, as everybody's capabilities improve you know it can be that that like writing uh you know writing a, a meaningful song can become more elusive or it seems like that would be a, a danger uh but I, but i will say that you know back back to your earlier question you know when as gina's join us you know and as as nick and seb joined before them uh you know what what starts as what starts off as something that we you know we as a band don't want, which is a lineup change and you know and all the all the you know like two steps back that happens with that. Uh -huh. um, I have to, I've had to I've grown you know kind of accustomed to it because you know I'll, I'll put it this way like we have yet to record an album with the same lineup or wow. two albums with the same lineup. It hasn't happened yet. Um, however, I do I, you know I I've learned that. You know, if that's if that is the case, since that has been the case up until now, and I will also note that <laughs> it feels as though we have a stable lineup. Finally, um, I do have to look at these things which could be considered negatives as positives. You know, you have to see the opportunity through the through the confusion of uh, you know having somebody who's spent ten years in the band leave and then bringing in somebody who spent no time in the band and then trying to get them up to speed. Like that's a that's difficult. 
That's taxing. However, mentally, man. <laughs> it's totally, it's, it, it's extremely taxing. Yeah. And creatively, it's taxing. However, I feel extremely lucky at the same time because the the lineup that we currently have with Gina Gleason, Nick Jost, and Sebastian Thompson, they they came into the band with vitality, with energy, with with a you know with a lot of ambition, with a lot of drive, and, and a, you know great work ethic, as well as you know a, some personal chemistry and some musical chemistry, and you know everything that we needed. We, you know, you know, this band received when, when these members have joined and, you know, as Gina, Gina joined, like it's, it's like, that's a very, uh, I don't know. I mean, it seemed like it could be really difficult because I played, you know, Pete, our former guitar player, I played music with, I played music with my entire life, you know? So one of my oldest musical relationships, you know, is now no longer intact within the band. And I thought that might be too challenging or if we, you know, maybe we'd have to take a step back musically, but Gina, you know, Gina, Gina's, uh, you know, value as a, as a, you know, as a technical musician, as a, as somebody who's capable of, you know, songwriting and, and, um, somebody who's, you know, work ethic is, is, you know, out, outstanding, like allowed for that, you know, transition from, from Baroness Mark six to Baroness Mark seven to be an easy one. And I didn't really feel, the, I didn't really feel the, the change as a, as a, you know, as an arduous task or anything like that. It was, it was kind of exciting and it was nice. And as I said, you know, you, you know, these things, you don't, you don't ask for them. You don't want them, but when they happen, you have to find the opportunities that exist in it. So, you know, on the most basic level, when somebody new joins the band, you get, a, you get a fresh set of ears, you get a new, you know, you get like a little gust of wind in your sails because they're coming in, they're coming into the band without, you know, without the, without the experience of being in it. And so it's a new thing for them. And that's an infectious kind of attitude to have. So, you know, essentially rather than letting three people's, uh, you know, I guess, I don't want to say disappointment or frustration, but allowing the, you know, the, the, con- the confusion and anxiety that the three of us may have had with, you know, a lineup change to affect the way we were. Instead, we focused on the energy that the one new person, you know, coming in brought with them and, and, you know, allowed that to affect the three of us. And I think that the, uh, the, uh, effect, effect of that was, was, was a hugely positive one. You know, we just, it was just like, all right, shit, you know, let's, let's move forward now. Uh, we don't, you know, let's throw out the old rule, rule book. Let's write, you know, let's just try to inc- write better songs. You know, that's kind of the goal. Uh, you, know, you can talk about all of these other things all day long to, you know, blue in the face, but <laughs> my, my creative conceptual goals from record to record, just to improve, you know, just to be, be a better songwriter. And I just got, you know, come up with a simple set of uh, parameters that, that you apply to each new record that allows that to happen. I think. Uh, it certainly felt like it did that with it, you know, with Golden Gray. So I, I think we're all, I think we're all really excited. And I think, it, I think it's awesome that, you know, this many years in and this, you know, having experience, uh, you know, this band through the eyes of so many other musicians. It's impressive to me that we still care. You know, that there's like the, still the same amount of passion. Maybe, maybe even a little bit more, and that 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 has like transcended the the actual, you know, statistics of the lineup. You know, it's it's kind of awesome. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, it, and uh, I, first of all, I commend you for sticking with it and, and you know, because like I said, it's such a taxing thing mentally that, you know, it's easy to just want to be like, you know what, screw it, I'm out, you know, like, fuck it. And, oh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but to stick with it and to, to allow yourself to grow, like, that speaks a lot to, to you as a human and, and uh, you know, uh, allowing eyes from the outside because when you're when you're creating you're, you know you're the you're baroness basically you've been there from the beginning and you kind of get lost in that perfection like wanting to perfect a, th- a sound or something or it's your art yeah. so it, it, you know you get lost in it and allowing someone to come from the outside to bring like hey i'm a fan and i can i can provide this palette for example and to compare it to the art like you here's a bigger palette it's not going to make it easier for you but at, in the end you'll have a more beautiful piece because you have more colors to work with or in this case you know more elements yeah. like female vocals or you know different skill sets you know what i mean yeah, and it's and it's just it's just odd because it's it's really you know it's, it's I think it's 
and it's become easier to easy to identify these things ret- you know, retroactively. It's 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 you know even even as even though this is I'm just talking about last year, but I can look back on last year and say, oh my god, like you know, I don't know how this ha- I don't know how the situation came to be, but it did, and because it did, nobody questioned it because it was you know everything everything that was happening was positive. So you know, uh, well, you know how do we how do we come how did that come about? Uh, you know, it, it doesn't. I don't. I don't know. You know, I think. Um, you know, I think the way. You know, I, as to like the. You know, the chasing of perfection. I think that I've always. You know, I've. You know, I've always had. You know, sort of one foot in visual arts, one foot in the sonic arts. So I, I. You know, I pull. I pull ideas from one thing into another, and that that has made it. You know, easy for me at points to define what I'm going for in a, you know, in a different way than, than other people have, you know, at least to, to my ears. And, you know, like I, I, you know, I will, I will admit for, you know, full disclosure, like, yeah, of course we we are chasing perfection. Like that is absolutely the ideal. Mm-hmm. However, we've learned how to define perfection in a, in a way that that's not as, not a simple basic thing that's impossible. Well, not a simple basic thing. It's still impossible, but uh-huh. like you know, it would it would seem that with a better you know te- with a better technical crew, you know, like uh, you know our bass player is like one of, you know, one of the best musicians I've ever played with. You know, instead of our drummer, like he's he's been playing he's been playing drums you know in bands that I've appreciated and and drawn inspiration from since the you know since the early nineties really. And Gina, you know, Gina, Gina's just, let's just put it this way. She's just a better, faster, more fluent guitar player than I am. Like, that's, that's awesome. You would think that, you would think that, or I, you know, I think from the outside perspective, it would seem as though, you know, our, our definition of perfection would have something to do with a technical uh, precision or accuracy. I would say that it has nothing to do with that, and, and that's actually something that we, the four of us are very aware of. Um, is that we could we could easily like step over that weird frog boundary line, and, and and then all of a sudden you're just you know it's just like dazzling fireworks and technical displays. But you know, as as this band has gotten better, we've we put more of an eye towards the you know the soul or the energy of the music. Uh, rather than the you know the performance uh, precision uh, you know statistics of something and I, and I, that's been that's been kind of awesome because that's how I've always you know that's how I've always felt you know it's like yeah to get, to get, to become a better artist over you know it, it, whatever your art is doesn't the medium doesn't really matter here but to become a better artist over the years you're, you're you know you, you have to understand that what you're doing is self-expression you know like mm-hmm. and self-expression is what self-expression is you know for somebody like me it involves details and layers and embellishments but more much 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 more important to that is is you know is the pulse and is the you know the underlying structure the thing that you know the thing that feels good and to have gone this long and still you know and, and not lost sight of what is important in our music and that is you know how genuine it is. So if, you know, if, if, if a song we're writing is meant to be emotionally heavy or yeah. if it's meant to be angry, if it's meant to be sad, if it's meant to be soft, if it's meant to be loud, that we're using, we're using our, you know, our skill set of musicians to support those ideas rather than to outdo one another or, 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 you know, what, what this thing that, that I hear all happen all the time in music, which is, you know, People playing so well at such a high competency level that it, it sort of overshoots the you know the the meaning of the song or or, or the you know the intent of the song and, and that's you know it's just like okay well it's great and you know I'm glad you can play that fast and that's wonderful and uh, you know it's and it is impressive you know and I'm not gonna lie it's totally impressive yeah. and it offers me like that immediate sense of satisfaction to hear somebody just completely shredding or wailing or whatever. But that's not what we are, you know, and I know that's not what we are. And I think that what, what we, you know, as the way I've come to think of it is that, that, you know, the four of us are effectively servants whose master is the song or the record or, you know, the, the idea of the idea of a song. And 
that we're, we're simply support structures and everything that we do, I mean, that I do as a vocalist, as a guitar player, as a, you know, sound maker is, exists to support and elevate the idea of the song. The song's more important than me, so I don't have to be the most audible. I typically am. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'm, the, I'm the guy that sings most of the time, so I typically am very audible. But that's not to say that my, you know, my part is more important. It's, it's to say that you know, we've, we've learned, we've tried to learn, you know, humility through music. And that's a difficult thing because look, in order to become a musician who performs on a stage, you got to have this, like, you got to have a little ego. You got to have a little narcissism. That get, that's the only thing that gets you up there. For sure. thinking, okay, well, you know, whatever, whatever I do as a musician is, is valuable enough that I want it to be heard. Uh, but now I'm in a group with three other musicians. Is what I'm doing more valuable than what the rest of us to get? No, you know the the, the lesson that you know that, that I think we've learned over the years. The lesson that I've learned over the years is is one of you know relative humility. You know, by virtue of the fact that it is a group and we are all supporting this. You know, the idea of the song, the idea of the record, the performance, or you know whatever whatever it is. All we have to do is make sure that 100 percent of whatever we're doing adds to benefits, elevates, lifts up, or tra- and transcends, you know, the song itself. And I think that's, I think that's working in full effect on Golden Grey. And, and it's, it's awesome what it does because I, it's, again, it's not something you can have. You can't really have that, this discussion in advance of writing something. It right. happens or it doesn't happen. And you look back on it and go, oh, man, like, high fives all around. Like, we did that. And everybody, you know, everybody was working independently in a way that supported everybody else. And, you know, I think, I think the, uh, then I think, you know, that would be like so super romantic about the way this, you know, music is written or anything like that. But I think one of the most, you know, impressive things, one of the things that, that inspires me the most with, you know, where the band's at now is that we have, we all trust each other. We all respect each other in a, in a, in a nonverbal kind of musical way where, you know, if some if some portion of us is jamming or playing something, the or the rest of us are able to respond to that in a unique way that you know that, that you know that shows our care you know each one of our individual characters, but also in a way that that you know again it's just like it's just the support the idea of support it's the idea of like serving something that's greater than you you know you or creating something that's hopefully better better and greater and bigger and you know has a higher quality level than any of the individual parts or the sum of those parts you know what i mean I for sure for sure i mean i, I and, and, then, and then and then asking that all the time out of out of you know out of your band and like doing 17 tracks and there were some of them are pretty weird and some <laughs> you know so and, and very frequently i'm i like very frequently i push the four of us to do things that don't make sense from the perspective of status quo but you know uh, we're actually trying to do new things we're trying to push our sound and push our the ideas that we have into pretty bizarre territories in order that we better understand what we are and in order that we have become a more you know unique idiosyncratic unit and it's tricky because you gotta you, that's asking us that's asking a lot yeah, for sure, especially from, you know, cuz it, it's ideas that you're coming up with and then sharing and then they're in they're putting their input and uh but like you said I do like what you said about how you're serving the song and and that's one of those things that I've noticed when bands do it when when it just kind of like feels that they have an, a purpose that is beyond them. Like it's not a technical showdown or a talent show. Like, Hey, check it out. I'm, you know, look how fast the drummer can go or look how fast the, right. you know, you know it's, it, it has a message. It has a meaning. And that I've always connected more with bands that can pull that off, can pull off this, I guess like, I want to say passionate or whatever, but you, you feel it instead yeah. of just, you know, observing uh, a human body, you know, being super talented, you're actually feeling exactly. like something deeper. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you've got all that talent. It's, it's like, I, I use, you know, I like to use, I like to step outside of music to use like meta, the metaphor so that they make a little bit more sense to me. But like, you know, I think I, and I use, I talk about carpentry a lot when I'm talking about this, cause it, it seems like, it seems like a suitable uh, uh, analogy, but you know, if you're a cabinet maker, at the end of the day, your job is to create a space that holds something. You know, there's a function, there's a purpose. The making it beautiful part 
comes from dedication, comes from time spent, comes from making it incorrectly a million times. Uh, and, and, you know, so, so there's a, you know, so in, at all, you know, in, in a great, you know, great carpentry exists, you know, simultaneously as, uh, great craftsmanship, but also great artistry. And, you know, I think songwriting, the craft of songwriting, you know, making albums is this, is similar because your song, has, your song has a basic function, you know, it's, it's, it's to express a feeling or, or to, you know, tell a story or, you know, every, every song's different you know, uh, in some way, you know, with, with respect to that, but, you know, let's just say like, okay, we're writing, writing a song about like an experience and that experience is, you know, is particular and has, uh, you know, has an emotional content or something. Okay. So everything we do needs to like, needs to work with that in mind. You know, that's, all, that's the more, most important thing. But once we've got that established, once we got that sort of pulse heartbeat, kind of thing established then we can then we can use the you know then we can use a little uh, you know then we can use our fireworks on top of that to push it into overdrive you know like really really make it something special uh and and so so you know so i think you know the te- technical playing or you know, let's, let's just say like that like let's just say like you know Sebastian likes to do like pretty psychotic things with his drums but he does them when that psychosis suits and benefits the song, you know, right. and he won't do it when, you know, he won't do it in a song that doesn't need it. It's a, it's a, you know, it's, and it, and that's, a, that's, that is one of the most subtle, but most important aspects. I say, th- I think of, you know, being, being a musician in, in a collaborative effort is understanding, you know, how and when to use those more impressive skills to, to benefit, uh, you know, to benefit the music. So it's not, I'm not, you know, I'm not making a, I'm not making a gesture and saying, okay, we're just holding back all the time. I'm saying, you know, sometimes you've got, sometimes you want to throw, you know, you want to do something that spins everybody's head around and sometimes you need to blow everybody's hair back. Right. Yeah. But you need to do that when it's, when, you know, you need to learn, understand like the, the drama of music and, and you know, the, the show, the sort of showmanship of it that, you know, on the level where, it happens when it needs to happen because it actually it actually supports that. Uh, again, it supports the you know the the song itself. It's it is, and it's kind of crazy because I hear I hear a lot of examples of you know people going the, the other way with it, and you know like bands get better at playing and better at playing and better at you know recording or or, or whatever whatever it is, and all of a sudden I think the songwriting has taken a, an extremely like sorry, it's just taking a back seat, and, and you know the idea of playing has become more important than <clears throat> excuse me. the idea of playing your instrument has become more important than playing the song. And right, that yeah. sucks to hear. That's you know that's like that's when it's like oh cool you know like I can't do that. It's great, you can. It it just seems like you're showing off. You know, it's like it's like oh you got a car with a gigantic engine and you're just riding up and down the street. You know, turn the you know pulling the mufflers off and making it loud as hell. Yeah, it's, okay, cool. Like, I get it. You know, like, you know, <laughs> 10 seconds in and I'm annoyed because you're just some, you know, jerk off right up and down the street, you know, upsetting the neighbors. And everything. Like, okay, cool. You can do that. You can upset the neighbors with, you know, with, with that sort of stuff. But yeah. man, it is tricky to write a song that feels right. You know what I mean? And that's what I've become like really concerned with and really obsessed with is, you know, like I have, I have emotional ideas and conceptual ideas for songs and I want to get those points across and I want to use music to get the point. I want to use music to establish these feelings and these impressions. And it's, and it's tricky. It's tricky when you're not, when it's not working, but then when it does, you know, you feel it, you feel it in a, in a much deeper place. And then, you know, that, that's kind of, you know, like citing songwriting. I think what's most fun about this recent record is, Sometimes I felt so lost in these things because the you know the the, the power the power of the songs was, was so overwhelming to me. It's you know so many like difficult ideas to you know to tangle with in the, in the space of one or two songs at a time. You know and uh, you know you, so you just sort of like trust your gut because your gut feels good about it. You know you know like I feel like we're doing you know like basically like when we're, when we're doing this record I've had. Very frequently, I had the feeling that 
we were doing everything right, but I didn't know what, you know, nobody knew what we were doing. We were listening to, we were listening back to like, you know, some of the, some of the music we had written and just going, what the hell is this? This, is, this, doesn't, <laughs> this doesn't adhere to like any normal, uh, you know, sound making, uh, that, that, that I've heard. And that was, you know, initially that, that can be a little scary to hear, but, but I think ultimately when we were in, when we were in these like new musical places and doing things that, you know, that we just never heard anybody else do, let alone ourselves, I think it was, that was the most exciting part of making a record like Golden Fairy. Hell yeah. I mean, that's definitely, that's definitely been my favorite when, when you do something like that and then you look back and like, wow, we did that. Okay. <laughs> that's cool. Wait, wait, uh, how do we do it? <laughs> and I guarantee, I guarantee you we could, we could not make this record the same again, not even yeah. close. We could make probably a comparable, you know, record. We could have made it. Um, if it's, it's just like, you know, I think the way I, I'm, I'm thinking about it now, it's, it's, there was sort of like a butterfly effect thing happening uh, where, you know, if you had changed any, like any external variable, like if, you know, if the first day we recorded was, 10 degrees warmer, it would have been mm. a different record. Yeah. Entirely, yeah. because almost everything that we, you know, we worked in this really weird, like, phonetic, insanely paced way where everything that we were doing was a reaction to the thing we had done before. Like, moments before, minutes before, days before, weeks before, months before, whatever. Where we, you know, everything was a reaction to the thing that had preceded it, and every proceeding thing was then a reaction to that you know and it was it was just kind of odd there was definitely no there was no map to it there was no guide or rule book to it it was just was like complete insanity and when it was done you know everything was like exhausted and it was done <laughs> yeah well i know you have to go soon uh your time is uh running out and you're busy uh but i had a couple questions real quick uh, there's more acoustic yeah, there's more acoustic stuff happening that I've noticed. Like you've, you've released some performance videos um, and doing like a couple in-store acoustic performances. Has there been a thought of doing a full acoustic record um, anytime in the future? And uh, the other question was in terms of deciding the color scheme for the record, is it something that you do f like after you start writing the music and you get a feel for it? Or is it something you have in mind? Like this is what the music is going to sound like. If, I'm going to go for this type of vibe based on the color, and then you kind of work from there. Okay, so first, as for the acoustic thing, yeah, the, you know, we've, we, uh, like, first off, let me, let me preface by saying, I've always written on acoustic guitars. Not everything, but, like, there's always a handful of songs on every record that are, you know, we just, I just write them, like, basically as, like, simple, simple songs on acoustic. So, you know, we, we've, just, we've, we've been more, uh, comfortable showing that side of what we do in recent, you know, past year, year or two. Um, and so, yes, you know, the idea has definitely been thrown around to us, you know, certainly by everybody. We were doing those in stores and it was like every other person we met was asking when we were going to do an acoustic record. So I think that's in our consciousness now. I don't, I don't know. Uh, we haven't made any formal plans for mm -hmm. sure, but I think it would, I think it would be and could be a really cool thing. Um, and I, I think part, you know, part of what we were, part of what I, my goal with Golden Gray was that we would broaden the horizons for ourselves moving forward, so that you know, by virtue of what we had recorded with Golden Gray, we could do something like an acoustic record next. We could also do something like a thrash metal record or a black metal <laughs> record next. It, it not, I'm not, I'm not saying that we will, because I think yeah. that, that might actually be a bad idea. But um, you know, I, I think the idea was to keep keep our options open for the future because it, you know keeping our songwriting diverse is always is, is has always been a really critical thing for for me. Um, so it certainly feels as though we're developing something now that's you know it's kind of stripped down that that could be cool to, to develop uh, you know with a little bit more focus and intent in in the future. Uh, so there's there'll probably be more on that. In the, in the not too distant future, uh, and then regarding regarding the you know the color schemes of these records, I think it's also important for me to rec to say out loud that I've never made a record the same twice. They just they just happen differently. You know, like I'm a I'm very uh, I place a lot a great deal of importance on process, and part of that 
is 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 being reactive and letting immediate you know letting intuitive and improvised decisions happen you know on the regular because otherwise you can get really kind of tied down to routines and methods and I really am not I'm not good when I'm when I get stuck in routines but like I think part of the reason why I make art and music is because I don't I really don't like being repetitive or doing the same thing over again or you know having somebody ex- expect something definitive or, or uh, you know clocking clocking into the same thing every day I try to keep it mm-hmm. try to keep it as broad as possible so none of them are done the same which means that in some cases we have a, we have the idea of the album title worked out in advance and so gotcha. we, we can make we can in fact make make uh, some decisions based on that and that that's that, that's been cool with some records when we've done that and let uh, you know let some of the songs be based on a, the idea of a color because that's it's, it's a crazy it's a crazy thing uh-huh. uh, and it's, it's it's really fun to do you know it's, it's very it's very high concept and yet it yields some very interesting results. Um, so we always, you know, the the idea of working within a color wheel uh, for your album titles is it's it's kind of cool. But doing it for thirteen years, okay, so uh, like I've pretty much exhausted all the you know all the ideas and concepts that you can you know that can be born out of that idea. But uh, you know, the only color we were left with is orange because we've done you know. Color wheels: red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Okay, so we did red, we did blue, we did yellow and green, we did blue, uh, we did purple. So we really only had orange left. So we called this thing was called orange for a very long time, and mm. just and I knew it, none of us wanted to call it orange. I don't really like the way that word sounds. Uh, so there's like a it's hard to write. It even like boils down. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, hard, it's hard to write. I heard Eminem do it there once on uh, with Andy Cooper, <laughs> and the uh, um, yeah, so I think like we always had that was always like sort of the working title for it, and it you know even even like up to the point where we were in the studio recording it, uh, you know all of the songs you know had that had that color attached to them. But I think it was like two or three days before I went in to master the record. So after it was fully mixed and we lived with it for a minute, I was going through some some lyric sheets and I found you know because I really wanted to figure out a better way of saying orange. You know, I was like looking it up in different languages and uh, trying to, you know, trying to come up with like funny plays on words. Like it just, it just was really difficult. And I was kind of fed up and, did, you know, I really like was directionless with it. And then going through some lyric sheets and I found the phrase golden gray in a couple songs, which was odd because usually I don't, <laughs> usually that doesn't happen. Uh, and, but, but it, there it was, it was, you know, it was a phrase in two songs and I think it rhymed. I think it was it rhymed with a phrase from a third song, like like almost in a really bizarre way. So I was like, "Well, that's a, okay." So this is obvious because I, you know, as as the cover artist, I've, I've always, you know, I've always had to consider what you know. I'm always thinking about what the cover is going to look like, you know, just on a just from a standpoint of color. And orange presents a very difficult problem for me because I don't really like that color. And I, before we had, I think before we even. No, no, we had a couple songs written, but really early in the process, I was trying to think about how we could use orange in a clever way on the title, on the cover, and I wouldn't get too frustrated with it. And I just had this experience; I've told it before, but I was, he had one of those trident, the trident gum that's like orange mint or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the package of it's like this really particular shade. I was just like pulling out a piece of gum. Mm-hmm. I was going. I think I was going out for the night. And I was in my. I was like leaving my bathroom. My bathroom had these like sort of neutral gray walls. And I pulled out this pack of gum orange and saw it against the wall. And I said, Ah, that's that's a color scheme. Like I can use a little bit of orange and a lot of. Gray. Uh, so when I found the golden gray, you know, lyrics, it just seemed obvious to me that 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 should be the title because gold's a whole lot cooler way of saying orange. In, with this record for me, you know, it's 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 similar. Uh, so that's you know that's where the, that's where this title came from, and and how that is how and why this record is also orange, but not. That's awesome, man. Thanks you. Thanks for sharing that uh, developmental process for you. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I hope that doesn't become no the problem. headline like, oh yes, the album was named after Trident Gum. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
But uh, that, that's great, man. Um, well, I'm going to let you go. I know you're busy and, uh, you know, we've gone over our time, but uh, I wanted to thank you for taking time to talk to us. Um, I'm hoping that one day you can uh, take that art show mobile. I know you did an art show with Jacob from uh, Converge and, uh, you know, hopefully you can bring that over to the West Coast sometime so I can see it in person. And, oh, man, uh, I mean, we really need to because I've done so much work on the East Coast uh, and in Europe and in Australia and in South America. I've done so much work everywhere but the west coast of the U.S. So I, I, I would really jump at the opportunity to do that myself. Um, so, you know, here's here's the 2020. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. And uh, I'm looking forward to catching you guys on the road. I've seen you guys a few times. I think the first time I saw you was with uh, Deftones in Miami. That was a few years ago. Oh, nice. And uh, Oh, that since... show was funny because the, 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 we had no sound guy at that point. The reason we got Miami show show in Miami was the reason we have we got a sound guy at the next tour, because we showed up there and the, you know the guy that was going to be mixing us that night was like, you know we set up all our stuff and he's like you know what I'm just going to tell you right now I really I really don't like rock music uh, probably not going to do a very good job tonight <laughs> so I That's hope you awesome. sounded all right then I think I, that guy was like completely he completely hated working with us. <laughs> well, the the sound was a little oh, yeah. off, but I did see the talent there, and it kind of that's what attracted me to checking you guys out and, <laughs> and uh, looking into the albums and and you know going to shows and stuff. So hopefully, uh, I'll, I'll catch you guys soon. And uh, thanks again, man, for the time. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course, man, for sure. Uh, all right, cheers. Take care. Bye, man. Yeah, have a good one. Bye. Where are the sea-